the last couple mm-hmm. weeks and they're going to have you know the, the really cool big oversized check they're going to present the car and then you're going to meet uh the winner of ten thousand dollars and the new car there you go so three o'clock and we're going to share that also so d- tell you what just stay on our timeline it's yeah, yeah yeah stay don't, on kuam don't, don't go on all, any other social media only kuam yeah, don't jump all over the rest of the internet you can get re- really right. easily because you're going to be like you know how they say like those people with like ADHD? Yep. It's like, okay, I want to go to KUM. I got to do this. Hey, look, squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just go to KUM. Leave it leave it to us. We're the pros. Yeah. We do the news. We, Kanye's going to do something. He's going to distract you. And then, you know. Yeah. All right. It's 830. Let's uh, go in with Superintendent John Fernandez, the Guam Department of Education. Good morning, John. Thanks for joining us. Hey, good morning. And uh, good to be here. So we got it. We were asking, did you enter the vaccine win or are you all right? No, I, I, I didn't. I, I, um, I encourage everybody else to do it. I just didn't get around to doing it. But um, I do hope that everybody will take advantage of the incentive uh, to get complete vaccinations. We're doing, I think we're doing a pretty good job yeah. compared to what we're hearing across the country and in other states. Um, in fact, you know, it was, I guess it was me, it might have been on your show. We were listening to the news about the states that are seeing the hospitalizations yep. rise. On most of them being unvaccinated. So whether it's uh, positive incentives or just, uh, you know, the reality that we're, you know, the, that we're seeing the risks um, that are still out there from the variants, we still want to encourage, you know, everybody to take advantage of the opportunity. It's a, it's a personal decision, but uh, I know many people have been waiting to see how it, how it turns out. And hopefully um, others have, you know, gained more confidence in taking advantage of, of that. Um, but no, I don't don't need a new car. And uh, you know, I, 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 I don't know. You I, look I good that, in a Kia Soul. <laughs> I do hope that uh, yeah, there are there are many families out there who can use that yeah. money too, and yeah. they, they'll be able to 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 get that get their lucky uh, number pulled uh, at, at today's vaccine win. So, um, but again, I heard that in the summer states there were you know, the the pots up to a million dollars. I know. So God. Wow. I feel like we're giving away chopped liver because I we just I, played the news and it was like the, I caught a little snippet. Which governor is that? I, I, no, like, I think that that was uh, that was in the Carolinas. They're giving away like a million yeah. He dollars. was like, we're giving away another million or but, something. But like, you another know, million. But you know, also what the John was saying, <laughs> it, it was in that that national story from CBS is they were saying that it looks like with the vaccination numbers and like and the momentum and everything. Remember, President Biden said he's looking at setting July fourth yeah. as their deadline. It looks like they're they're probably going to miss that. Whereas ours is, you know, obviously, you know, 17 days later. So what would be like our liberation, liberation day, day on yeah. the 21st, July 21st? And it looks like we are going to hit that. Yeah. And guys, uh, uh, former Governor Carl, GVB, and Jerry, deputy of GVB, coming up. Because I know that Carl had set uh, or wanted a uh, um, uh, July 1st uh, target um, yep. for reopening in the Airbnb and all that stuff. So we're going to talk with them uh, after uh, John. But John, I kind of wanted to start as we had a question from the news team about this uh, nurses uh, pay increase. It kind of happened pretty quickly. It was like, I think there was a bill and then the governor had came out and said, oh, no, no, I got this for my nurse, my fellow nurses. Um, and so, so, yeah, so, actually yeah, there, there, yeah, actually there are several things I want to cover today, but uh, right. definitely... Uh, we do appreciate the the fact that there was action taken on on nurses pay yeah. uh we've been talking to the nurses obviously they've been through uh, quite a year and a half uh-huh. of working together with partners of public health and and um you know, the hospital so we know there was you know was under consideration and um we were glad to see the um, the governor um uh, take note of that and and to uh, to um you know, review recommendations and 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 develop a proposal that uh, can be implemented going forward. So um, we do. Uh, we've got, we have about 45 nurses, uh, including their, you know, including uh, the nursing administrator here at DOE. And um, you know that for DOE, it's a 15 percent um, uh, adjustment to their base, and then a 10 percent differential pay based on their location at DOE. So um, we're, you know, the employees are are happy for that. Our nurses are happy for that. Obviously, you know, when we saw the differential, we wanted to make sure we understood whether or not that would pose an issue of nurses trying to leave DOE uh, to go to the hospital or public right. health, because we know all, all the agencies need help. But you know, those those types of things matter uh, in terms of compensation when you when you're competing for professionals, right. um, you know, who have to be trained out there and on the front lines. Uh, but again, overall, we're thankful to, to see that happen so quickly. 
Uh, sometimes, sometimes these issues get talked about for a long time yeah. and nothing happens. Uh, it was good to see that. So are, are, um, are the DOE nurses going to get this uh, increase? And if uh, so, where are you guys going to get the money from? It, so we're, you know, we, we're in communication with DOA and BBMR and the governor's office with regard to the remaining costs for this current fiscal year, which is, um, we believe it's, it's less than 100000 or around 100000 um, to get from the August to the end of the, the fiscal year. And then we, we still have our budget hearing and, you know, our FY22 budget to, to get done. So um, this yesterday, uh, let me go ahead and, and, and lead into that story. Um, we, um, the, the board took an action yesterday to amend our FY22 budget request. Uh, part of the reason we did that was because, uh, as you recall, back in January, we submitted uh, one of those large DOE requests that we get every year because of the 14 point um, mandate that we have to meet. Uh, it was a $373 million um, budget request. Um, but of course, uh, since then, we've also had the, the influx of federal resources. And some of those resources did overlap with things that we requested for in our budget. So we committed to the governor and to the legislature that we would go back and as we uh, finalized our budget plans for the federal funds, we would uh, remove those items that were no longer needed in our FY22 request that was sent to the legislature. So uh, we took the board took action yesterday. Uh, we actually were able to uh, to fund about 82.6 million dollars um, that we had asked for in our in our budget. Um, the predominant, uh, um, you know, the the I guess the most significant amount was for um, capital improvement projects many of those that go unfunded um, every year. So the, the funds coming from the American Rescue Plan will finally give us an opportunity to go back and repair schools and address, you know, renovate the schools that need uh, that need to be fixed and, and, and allow us to uh, make sure that the facilities are safe for return uh, and for staying back in face-to-face -face instruction over the coming years. Another big chunk of the, that those funds uh, were also for um, instructional materials and type, you know, the the textbooks and materials that were needed for the classroom. So we were able to fund those those types of items and then a lot of supplies and equipment for the schools. So we were able to remove 82.6 million uh, because of those, uh, you know, the federal funds that have come in. And then um, we had to add back about $878,000 for the nurses uh, pay increase. So it netted out to about $81 million in reductions. So our, our new budget request is, is it's not quite down to, you know, it's still about 291 million, but um, it is uh, an adjusted request just to be clear to the legislature that we're not coming in there and asking for things that we can't fund otherwise. We're gonna fund what we can, everything else, we're gonna see what, what's available locally to support the, the agency's needs. So um, so again, the nurses cost on an annual basis is almost $900,000. And for that, we're wanting to make sure that gets reflected in the budget that gets approved. And then uh, finally, you know, in that in that same um, in the same action, uh, reducing our budget request, uh, there still there was still an emphasis, you know, by our board, uh, working with the governor as well to make sure that at the very least, uh, we want the legislature to to fund the maintenance of effort requirement that allows us to access the federal dollars. Mm. So uh, we're going to continue to work with um, the legislature on that. Our hearing is on July 15th. So between now and then. We'll be working with the legislature to provide additional information uh, as needed. Donna, so that was, uh, yeah. So that was, I mean, yeah. I don't have any, any questions on the budget yeah, side. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I just because I know you. There's a whole bunch of stuff you wanted to uh, share with us, but I, I just wanted before we get into that, uh, the congressman's uh, speech. We had a panel yesterday on the show. A couple of our uh, panelists uh, were saying that the speech was kind of short on education. Did you take away any education issues from the speech? Well, the, I think the thing that we've been talking about with the congressman and with our, you know, with our officials really has to do with ensuring the proper investment of these federal dollars. So I've shared, uh, you know, our general plans and as we've gone along with our elected officials and with the congressman. And um, I think, again, the key thing really is, and I think he understands this, the maintenance of effort, the, the you know, the, the requirement needed on the local side to be able to have the federal dollars to support you know, schools, those pieces have to come together. Otherwise, if we fail to meet the maintenance of effort requirement, we're gonna be, you know, we're gonna probably be in a, in a long 
you know, discussion with the U.S. Department of Education regarding uh, being able to access the funds that are probably, you know, will probably be um, uh, switched off until we resolve that issue. So we don't want to see that happen. We like to avoid that. So it's our job to continue to educate uh, our policymakers and make sure they have that information prior to making any decisions. So, so, um, so, so we'll work in July 15th again as our, as our yeah. hearing and we'll be there for the legislature right. on that. The other, the other two things I wanted to say since we have the public on, you know, listening in is that, uh, especially for those who are looking at the next school year, there were two decisions that I know students and parents wanted to, to confirm and make sure that they, they understood. And one was um, there was a, there were some adjustments to the school calendar for next year. Uh, previously, um, the school year, the calendar started on August 6th, where teachers reported for a work day and then they came in for one day of professional development and then we started classes in the following week. Uh, so, so we made a slight adjustment to that, uh, to that calendar uh, in order to add two more professional development days for teachers uh, and staff to be able to adequately prepare and you know, be refreshed on all the things that, that they need to be refreshed on entering this very critical year of return to face-to-face -face instruction. And now the first day of classes for students to report is uh, August 12th. So August 12th, everybody, especially you kids who might be getting this information, that's the start of the school year. And that's when we uh, expect to, to have you back in school, you know, uh, back on school grounds. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you back then. So that's one adjustment that was made that we're gonna, we're gonna put a presser out just to make sure that word gets around and people are clear about when classes start. The second uh, decision, um, I don't know that the students will be as happy as, as, uh, as others, but had to do with the school uniform. So uh, if you remember last year when the pandemic hit, um, we, with uh, following the lead of uh, Chairwoman Maria Gutierrez, and um, the input that we received from the community, as well as the fact that we were just entering this pandemic and we were shut down across the board, you know, at the time, uh, the board went ahead and waived the uh, uniform policy for the last school year. And so for those uh, students who were coming to school, you were not required to uh, wear your school uniform. Um, this year, there had been uh, further debate and discussion amongst our board members so we did issue out a survey uh, to our stakeholders. Um, I think the, basically the survey split in the following ways. We had about this is over 60% of the adults uh, wanted to see the, the uh, uniforms uh, reinstated. And of course, the majority of your, your middle and high school students wanted to see it optional. Um, so, you know, we recognize uh, the financial challenges that uh, are still out there for many families. And we recognize, um, you know, um, the need for for uh, schools to ensure that they can account for the students who are there and, and so forth. So we had a debate, I mean, a discussion about that and a uh, work session on, on the survey. And then last night, uh, the board unanimously uh, uh, voted in favor of reinstating the uniform uh, policy for the coming school year. So um, that decision is made, uh, I'll just say unanimously, but Ms. Gutierrez unfortunately could not uh, be there. And I know she wouldn't want me to, to indicate that she had uh, voted for it because she was a staunch supporter of waiving the policy for an additional year. But I know that the board members uh, who met last night and uh, heard, uh, you know, the, uh, the recap of the survey, uh, as well as the vendors who were there, uh, really asking them to uh, ensure that they took into account the needs of the families and issuing vouchers uh, to the schools to be able to provide free uniforms to families in need. Uh, with that discussion in hand, the board voted unanimously to reinstate that policy. So school uniforms will be required, and uh, we'll see how that goes uh, this coming year as we return back to normal operations. So those are the key ones I wanted to um, you know um, to, to address. Uh, or one one more note on vaccination because yeah. I hate to, I hate to have these conversations and somebody says later on how come we didn't talk about the big issue. So. Um, I just want to say that for the you know for the good of the order, we are do, making progress with vaccinations, and like I said before in prior interviews, we're now just over 70% of our school employees who are fully vaccinated. Now we've been tracking the students, the eligible 12 to 19 year olds who are also getting vaccinated. While we don't have DOE specific numbers, 
we are tracking the overall island numbers. And, um, and our projection is that we'll get about 60% of the 16 to 19 year olds fully vaccinated by the beginning of the school year and uh, probably around uh, between 35 to 40% uh, on the 12 to 15 year old side. So we won't quite be at that 80% mark for the kids, um, but you know we're, we're getting there just because they started a little bit later. So uh, one of the questions that, or issues that have come up, of course, and I've been asked uh, is, is whether or not a GDOE is considering a mandate uh, for vaccinations for employees and for, and for students. So uh, I want to clarify that DOE and the board are uh, we are not um, we are not determining or deciding on whether a mandate uh, should uh, will be in place. That obviously is in the realm of public health to uh, advise on, research, and dis and uh, recommend. And of course, the governor. But we are in discussion with them and to ensure that we understand what the what the you know the findings and recommendations are and how that will impact. Uh, the schools should that uh, should those decisions be made and should a mandate be be implemented. So um, so that's the the latest. I'm not sure uh, if and when um, they will decide or or uh, to either forego or to implement such a decision. But obviously it's a big decision, and you know we certainly uh, are going to be a part of, uh, of of adjusting to ensure that uh, whatever decision is made, we can abide by. Wow, uh, it's just kind of funny. We're spending the whole summer. <laughs> I was because you always come on for these updates, and I was thinking of the summer. Oh, well, probably not going to talk to John for a little while, but it's just been nonstop for you guys, right? Prepping yeah, for the next really, school year. Really tough. There was a, there was a, uh, a uh, you know the uh, Circle K uh, uh, um, marquee with the question or the statement of the day, and it said, "What I guess today's was what one responsibility did you wish you didn't have?" So <laughs> we're still compiling our list. <laughs> and a lot of a lot of hard decisions yeah. and, and things we do got to get done. So um, I, I was thinking about putting that out to the staff, but I don't want their answers. <laughs> we all we have a lot of work to do. Right. Um, but I thought that was very timely. There's a lot of things we're doing to just get make sure that the schools are prepared to open. Um, not just your regular you know summer preparation, but all the additional issues related to COVID-19. So, you know, HEPA filters and other, you know, the uh, plexiglass, other, other things that we've got on order, those also have to be added to the list of things to get done before we, we open up school. So we're pushing ahead and meeting all the time and um, it's not stopped, so absolutely. Um, John, I got to go read over at Atacau Elementary. Uh, it was a face-to-face -face, uh, reading for the summer school uh, class over there and there was a bunch of uh, readers who, who came out but um, I'm not sure what the point of telling you this is other than it was really cool to go back to school in the classroom I, didn't, I think the teacher had, had told me because I just assumed it was face to face because I know they were having face to face summer school and so when they uh, it was actually Frank Blas's wife who reached out to the center to reach out to me but the um, teacher Miss Eileen when I got a hold of her uh she was like okay yeah you're just gonna log on to our our classes google meets or whatever i was like oh no 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 no, no. i'm not i could barely figure out zoom on my own without jason's <laughs> help and i am coming into the class and she was like oh that works absolutely great so it was really cool to yeah. um to kind of see john because there were some kids who were on the online but i noticed that the effort and it was really inclusive uh to fold in the kids who were online there was a couple of them with the face-to-face -face students so I mean you know seeing how my own kids had done the online learning it was really cool to see to be kind of boots Zori on the ground with this hybrid right. uh, thing for summer school well well you know after this again after these 18 months isn't it isn't it a great feeling though to be around the kids I mean I think that's really you yeah. know really inspired us to kind of really push uh, for face-to-face -face you know we want to keep the kids safe uh, but if you're out there and you see the kids out there and you you know you realize you know what goes on in the school and what people kids are missing out on you just uh, you know what you just make you double the effort to to uh get them back uh again them back safely but uh, they need to be around each other and uh, they need to be with their teacher and, and i think if you, know, you being there just when i go out to the schools too like we're missing the kids and we, you know we really want to see them back at the right time so uh, we're working towards that for this coming school year well john thank you so much uh for your time we definitely appreciate it and have a good uh week 
Okay, wonderful. Thanks, guys. That's the right on. A quick Bye break. Days. We're coming back with uh, GVB, the Guam Visitors Bureau. We'll get an update on the Airbnb uh, and everything that's going on with the reopening of the island next, right here on the link. Good morning. Catch Sports Link on the KUAM News. KUAM News, in partnership with the Guam Visitors Bureau, brings you the Guam Safe and WTTC Safe Travel Certified Program Showcase. Look out.